You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell. Sponsored by Absolute Mortgage, a division of Pinnacle Capital Mortgage Corporation. Now, in the studio, local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here at 1150 AM KKNW, the July 30th show. I'm here to empower our community, providing you with opportunities and solutions when it comes to your money. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. You can call the show at one 855 Four hundred eleven fifty. Again, that's one eight five five four hundred eleven fifty, or online at themoneyr dot com. Discuss anything regarding money uh, with myself, or talk to the guests that I have in studio today. And right now in studio, I have Judy Cliborn, state representative, here to talk about transportation. Judy, thank you so much for coming back in studio. Thank you, Tina. It's always a pleasure to come. Well, and it's always a pleasure for my listeners because this is a big topic, um, especially in, in our area here talking about transportation. Just a little background on Judy. State representative has been a resident of Mercer Island for 45 years. She was mayor of Mercer Island for four years, at city councilwoman from 1990 to 2001, and executive director of the Mercer Island Chamber of Commerce. Her current House Committee assignments are transportation chair and health and care and wellness. Her legislative priorities are creating a sound transportation system that protects trade dependent businesses throughout the state and keeps Washington's economy globally competitive, continuing to increase job opportunities for working families and ensuring adequate health care and coverage and accessibility to Washingtonians. Wow. Wow. I mean, that's a lot of stuff that you're responsible for, Judy, and, and just, you know, helping a, a lot of us here in, in the Seattle area be a little bit more happy. Well, I do my best, and it's all something I think everybody's interested in, so it's yes. good to put my... Uh, work shoulder into it all definitely that. is yes. and I love having your segment in my in my library that I can share with uh, <laughs> people after the show so uh, Judy what's the most important issue in transportation right now well as uh, we probably have been hearing over the last couple of years we've been working to put a revenue package together yes. so that we would have new revenue and I think that this is going to be a year where that might not be as obvious because the big topic of conversation now is education. And when people get caught up in some other kind of uh, conversation, it it we do, we have a problem doing more than one thing. Well, I when can't, we're in there's Olympia. no such thing as multitasking. Uh, I I know that. Not in Olympia. Mm-hmm. But it is still an issue and it and I think that they go together. I think if you're in any kind of business, you understand that Transportation is what connects us. Mm -hmm. It's not just about jobs. It's about the economic development that goes with the uh, the transportation, and whether it's uh, roads or rail or, Mm -hmm. or or light rail, since we have another guest here. Yes, um, I I think these are all so critical to our state and it is the whole state not just Mm -hmm. this puget sound region although we do have our special things of course yes so judy why do we need more gas tax or other transportation revenue when we have such a high gas tax already i always have to to explain this because i think there are very few people who understand that even though we pay a high gas tax Mm -hmm. here other states don't have they often use um, their general fund okay. to help pay for their transportation. So we don't do that here. And so we have to have the gas tax be enough to pay for all of our projects. What really bothers people is that they think they're paying in now and they wonder where it goes. Yes, well, I'm paying this high gas tax. Yep. Where is it going? So and, where is it going? <laughs> and it is right now going to finish off 421 projects that were promised starting in 2003 and okay. 2005. So that's exciting. It's bonded. Mm-hmm. And so for the next 25 years, the, that gas tax will go to pay off bonds. Okay. And that makes it mean, that means that we have no revenue for anything new. Yeah. So we've been, that's not a good thing. We need to have a little money. Well, there's an ongoing need. I know that people uh, hear about things that uh, they want to know why we're building a tunnel when mm-hmm. we could be doing something else. You know, the tunnel was promised in the five cents that was passed in 2005. So that's wow. how long it takes projects to get going yeah. and to get finished. Mm-hmm. So we now have 12 years without any new revenue. 
And if we don't have new revenue, then we can't have projects like 167 and 509 that keeps ports open. Yeah. And, and the projects that are important and we, in Spokane. You know, being, and being in the, I do the mortgage side, not the real estate side, but I'm in that, that community. And I, you know, it's important for our economy to, and, and to, to be able to have good transportation. And it's going to make everybody, you know, everybody are ha happier, be able to make decisions on where they, you know, where they want to work and make it convenient and save money. So, Judy, why should we put more revenue into Washington State Department of Transportation when all we hear about is mismanagement. I know. And I think it's really easy to sell papers mm -hmm. when you have something that's going on that uh, people want to read about. They're very curious about having the largest tunnel boring machine in the world, at least for the, the next month or so. And uh, <laughs> it, the fact that it is stuck is uh, it is a reflection of that they, they think there is mismanagement okay. at DOT, but the pro the problem is is that we have hired someone to do that, mm -hmm. and so DOT has hired a tunnel partnership who bought a tunnel boring machine from yeah. Hitachi. That tunnel boring machine is still on um, on warranty. Yeah, they will fix it. Mm -hmm. It is a drag to have it sitting there, and I think it is very difficult for people to remember that there, even though the tunnel is not uh, boring there are still 400 people working on the sure. tunnel project on each end yeah wow so it will at some point uh, w within the next year it will get restarted mm -hmm. it will finish and when it's done I think people will be shocked at how uh, how much it's appreciated yeah so Judy what about the climate change issues that uh, that we've been talking about you know, this is something that's just come up in the just in the last part of the last session, and and then the governor just came out and made his executive order to move this whole issue forward. It has impacts in many different areas, but I think in transportation, it, since transportation is identified as one of the largest drivers of climate impact, mm -hmm. then it we stand to come into some uh, some way that people will want to change how we use transportation. So I, when I talk to the governor, and he has a task force that's going forward, and mm -hmm. we will be following along, and there are some things that I think are really popular and, and that people will like, like switching to um, more fuel-efficient co cars yep. or using alternative uh, vehicles, uh, electric vehicles, and having al alternative fuels. That's going to mm -hmm. be not too, too hard. I think things that will be a little more... Uh, troublesome for people to understand, including myself, will be the impacts of uh, if you tried to do cap and trade or you do um, some kind of uh, carbon tax. Those okay. are things that people don't understand, and I think it'll take a lot of learning for all of us, including the legislature. Mm -hmm. I don't see this going forward with a whole uh, wholesale just swoop down and get a whole bunch of things done. Yeah. But I know that there are things that we're already doing because electric vehicles, we're one of the highest electric vehicle use states in the I nation. I didn't realize that. Wow. Congratulations to us. Yeah. We're, yeah. And, and, and the other thing that that does, of course, is it decreases the amount of gas tax that comes uh -huh. in. And so yeah. that's another reason why we're going to have to uh, make sure that we have more gas tax. Yeah. So, so Judy, can you explain to our listeners what, what can happen if we don't do anything? Well... I think that we have to maintain what we have, and this has mm -hmm. been a very difficult time to decide whether you go out for a small package. I think this, there's been some talk of, say, uh, a three-cent gas tax that goes just for maintenance and preservation. If you use the roads, you understand that they're getting pretty worn out, and, yeah. and the bridges, if we don't keep them up, we have to close them or waitlist them, and, and that is huge. It's devastating. It's devastating to, to our... Um, to our economy and yeah. and I if you're I know that people who are in your business because I talk to people in real estate all the time mm -hmm. you're people are deciding where they're going to live oh yeah because of congestion and because of the way they have to use the roads at mm -hmm. different times and it just yep. it makes your decisions uh, it, it does impact your decisions mm -hmm. that you make so if we don't then I know we're going to have more congestion yep I uh, I think that there are, will be fewer uh, things that we can do to keep the economy going. And I, uh, it concerns me that we don't look like we can get this done mm -hmm. because it, it reflects on our government that we can't make a decision and sure. actually move forward. Well, what about uh, King County? When, when you went to the voters for transit and county roads, since it didn't pass, 
what now? So King County has uh, its own funding, which they went okay. out and they asked. And so it really isn't a, it isn't an impact to the state as much as uh, they provide a lot of level of service. It, uh, not just the state provides service in, in transportation. So definitely they have the transit side. Mm -hmm. And that I think has been uh, interesting. The other transit agencies, when 695 passed, which was the first IMAN initiative, okay. that used to serve all the pay. Uh, it paid for all transit. The state had a pretty big, uh, a pretty big payment that they gave to transit uh -huh. service. That was eliminated. And so we have not, what we did is we gave the transit agencies the sales tax. They have a, a part of the sales tax that they can use. Mm -hmm. The other transit agencies, because we had the recession, it was really low. The other transit agencies all announced that they were going to make cuts, but they came back and in some cases they even increased their service. Okay. In King County, mm -hmm. I think we're going to have to, I think they will get together, they will look at how they can use their dollars mm -hmm. that are coming in now at a higher rate. And they have to get real about what they can do. The suburbs have not seen an increase in the, in their um, service uh -huh. because Seattle has the density. But one of the things that I think would be interesting when Sound Transit gets to talk is this new effort that the, uh, the county executive, who is the chair of Sound Transit, mm -hmm. who is also... A, the county executive in charge of Metro tra Transit is saying, how could we work together? How can we make this a more efficient system? Yeah. If Sound Transit is supposed to be the trunk, then let the, the spokes be Metro. And mm -hmm. we had always envisioned that as the way that would work. So even though the, ca uh, the state may not have a huge way of helping at this point because we haven't been able to pass any revenue, uh -huh. I think that there are things that by working together, we will be able to have better transit. And oh, everything's working better. Together. It's, everything's better working together, without a, without a doubt. Judy, I've got just a second here with you before I got to take a break. Just really quickly, who's going to pay for the tunnel? Who's going to pay for the tunnel? Yes. The tunnel is going to be paid for through the uh, large project budget that we have with multiple layers of contingency. Mm -hmm. And the uh, thing, maybe I should clarify that the only thing that I know who won't pay for the tunnel is the city of Seattle. So Got it. it will be done by the state. Wonderful. Judy, thank you again so much for uh, coming back in studio and we'll have to definitely have you back soon. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. This is your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, signing off for the day, but I'll be here same place, same time next weekend, right here at 1150 AM KKNW. Enjoy the rest of your week, everyone.